Okay. All right, we're moving on to Tuesday. Topic Tuesday. Another one that's written, Who? which one got this one? This is written by Dr. I think his last name is pronounced Gao because he is now a resident and I believe he's a resident at of Cedar Sinai. So good for you, Duke. Very busy man now these days. Started off with us as a med student. He's now a resident and I'm pretty sure it's at the Schmidt, uh, Schmidt Heart Institute, which is part of Cedar Sinai. All right. So um, again, he's going into antihypertensive medications. So they must have been in cahoots when planning this, I think. Uh, but he talks about how hypertension or high blood pressure places significant pressure, as we just learned, on the walls of the blood pressure um, of the blood pressure of the vessels, especially the aorta. And in the context of an aortic aneurysm, um, high blood pressure can further stress the already weakened wall of the vessel, accelerating its enlargement and increasing the risk of rupture. So by lowering the blood pressure, antihypertensive medications reduce the mechanical stress on the aortic wall, helping to stabilize the aneurysm. So these medications in general, the, the uh, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, the antihypertensive medications, they don't just control blood pressure, but they also help improve the integrity of the wall. And remember, we've got three layers. You have the inner, which is the intima, the middle, which is the media, and the outer, which is the adventitia. So it's really helping to improve the integrity of all three of these vessels. And uh, it's really going to be beneficial for patients that have aneurysms. And so long-term blood pressure management can significantly reduce the risk of an aneurysm-related complication. Notice we never use the words will it can will is giving you a guarantee definite and that nobody can do because human bodies have a mind of their own sometimes let's talk about some of those common antihypertensive medications so there's several classes of these types of medications that are used to manage high blood pressure in patients with aortic aneurysms and each type kind of works through a different mechanism to lower blood pressure and ultimately reduce the burden on the aorta. And yesterday or Monday, just now two seconds ago, we talked about beta blockers uh, and we are gonna go through a summary of that below. So again, remember beta blockers, reduce the heart rate and the force that is, uh, the force of contraction on the heart, which decreases the amount of blood that the heart pumps and consequently will lower your blood pressure. Beta blockers such as metoprolol, nice tongue twister, labetalol, and tanolol. These are commonly used in patients that have already an existing aortic aneurysm, and especially in patients that have a connective tissue disorder or, or syndrome like Marfan syndrome, or really any other type of genetic condition that predispose them to the opportunity to have an aneurysm. So let's talk about another antihypertensive medication. Unlike the lulls, metoprolol, labetalol, the LOLs, which are the beta blockers. There's also an angiotensin converting enzyme, or these are known as ACE inhibitors, ACE inhibitors. And so these are the PRILs, ACE inhibitors end in PRIL, P-R-I-L. And an ACE inhibitor, interesting enough, will actually block the conversion of angiotensin 1 and it converts it to, it blocks the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which is a potent vasoconstrictor, causes the arteries to tighten, and that would increase your blood pressure, okay? So if you inhibit this pathway, ACE inhibitors cause blood pressures to relax and to widen, to open them up a little bit more. To It causes vasodilation, and that helps to lower blood pressure because when things are tight, you build up that pressure on that vessel, but when it's relaxed, it allows it to flow a little bit more easily. So a medication like lisinopril, enalapril, enalapril, enalapril. It depends on where you emphasize the syllable, right? So I don't know. You're going to have to do pronunciation on that one. That actually, actually helped to reduce the pressure inside the arteries and decrease the stress on the aortic wall. It just keeps everything moving, open, and relaxed. Prills, ACE inhibitors. Moving on to ARBs. The ARBs, angiotensin II receptor blocker, they end in the TANS, 
tan, low sartan, val sartan. Those are typically the medications that are an angiotensin II receptor blocker, whereas the ACE inhibitors block the ACE, um, the uh, angiotensin I from converting to a two. An angiotensin II blocker is an ARB. It's a little bit different. The mechanism of action is that an ARB works by blocking angiotensin II from binding to its receptors on blood vessels, preventing vasoconstriction and leading to lower blood pressure. This is like science experiment stuff. I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't even know how people figure out how all this does this, but this is amazing to me. So it has a similar end effect to an ACE inhibitor, but through a different mechanism. I thought it sounded like it could be similar. Medications like Losartan, Valsartan, these are the types of drugs you've heard are particularly useful in patients who cannot tolerate the prills or the ACE inhibitors like lisinopril. And so when we say tolerate, it could be that you're developing a cough um, and it's too tickly. So you change a different medication. There's probably other side effects and issues that you just can't handle the full ACE inhibitor. So they offer you an ARB. Um, I just said that I didn't even read ahead to see it said cough. See, I somehow just knew that. ARBs also reduce the aortic wall stress, similar to an ACE inhibitor, and they're effective in controlling hypertension in patients that have aneurysms. So it's not uncommon to be prescribed a beta blocker or a lol like a metoprolol, as well as um, an ARB like an angiotensin II receptor blocker like Losartan. Did, it's very similar. Makes sense now because I was on lisinopril for years before my aortic issues ever showed themselves and had a horrible cough. So, um, and I don't remember if Divan is lisinopril, it could be a different name for it, I'm not sure, but that's why I was moved to Losartan. All right, another one CCBs, calcium channel blockers. They prevent calcium from entering the muscle cells of the heart. Um, and the blood vessels, which actually leads to relaxation of the blood vessels and a decrease in blood pressure. So amylodipine or Norvasc is the other name for amylodipine. And mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm, I don't know, diltiazem, diltiazem. I cannot pronounce it, uh, nor will I try, but you can, and that would be fun for you. Me trying is also fun for you but I don't want to. But those, those are examples of CCBs, amylodipine. I've definitely heard of that one and I've used that one. And that can help in managing blood pressure. So while the primary use is controlling blood pressure, it can be really particularly useful in patients who need additional blood pressure control um, or just can't use a beta blocker or an ACE inhibitor. I've used amylodipine before kind of as a quicker acting medication is how I looked at it. So if I was having breakthrough blood pressure, uh, my doctor would tell me, go ahead and just take an amylodipine. Um, but there are people that do take that on a more regular basis because maybe they don't need a beta blocker. So they're fine just taking am, um, amylodipine. All right, diuretics is another one. I think women have been taking diuretics for a long time, otherwise known as a water pill. And I think that what has been advertised to women is when we're feeling bloated or if we're feeling like we're retaining water, go grab a water pill over the counter and it'll cause you to have frequent urination and then you get on the scale and you've lost three pounds. That's not how you really want to use these, okay? I just don't believe in putting things in my body without discussing something like that with my physician. Um, but it does help the kidneys eliminate excess salt and excess water from the body. So, I mean, you're going to probably see like a pound or two or whatever um, fluctuation, but you know, you eat your dinner, like some fajitas, and you're gonna see that number go right back up. Not because you've actually added weight, weight, but because you're retaining water due to the salt intake. So it's just, it's a mind over matter. But really understanding that when you're prescribed a diuretic, the ultimate goal is to reduce the overall volume of blood in your body which will lower your blood pressure. So hydrochlorothiazide, furosemide, these are all commonly used diuretics. Now there's some um, of the above mentioned pills, I think 
like losartan, I think it can come in like maybe potassium sparing or it can come with a diuretic built in. Don't quote me, I'm not a doctor. So don't, that's why I'm saying don't take these things over the counter because you may not be 100% sure what's already built into a medication that you're taking. That's a really important point. Um, these diuretics really you are used to help manage fluid retention and blood pressure, which ultimately reduces the load uh, that's being placed on the aorta and it lessens the risk of an aneurysm expansion. If you find male or female that if you take a piece of jewelry off, it's really hard to take it off. You have lines underneath your rings. If you are taking off your sock at night and you've got a huge line and like the top of your foot, super swollen. Um, if you're finding that your limbs, your, your like your feet, your ankles, your hands, things are getting swollen you really need to call your doctor. Don't just make a decision to grab something over the counter. Okay, it's three times I've said it. I hope you get it. <laughs> there you go. Um, but overall, anti-hypertension anti medications are a cornerstone of managing aortic disease by controlling blood pressure, which we've talked about a lot now, and it reduces the stress on the aortic wall. And when you can reduce the stress on the aortic wall, these medications could help slow the progress of having an aneurysm and actually potentially lower the risk of a rupture. So if you or you know someone that has an aortic aneurysm, it's really crucial to, again, ace your healthcare journey and work closely with your healthcare provider to develop an effective blood pressure uh, medication plan that will be tailored to your individual circumstance. So this is why advocating for yourself, explaining and communicating to your physician um, your knowledge or lack of knowledge and understanding of this and your current condition, as well as educating them on your overall lifestyle and uh, your activity levels, how much water you're drinking, are you finding that there's some swelling? All of that should lead to this two-way street of success where they can choose from a plethora of medications that will work best with your lifestyle and will make you want to take them on a consistent basis once you understand the importance and the mechanism of the drugs and how they work and then what their benefit is. So that is your topic Tuesday.